The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 8.30 a.m. Thursday morning, th 60 minutes to go until the opening bell. We got markets in negative territory. S&Ps right now negative by about 10 points, trading at 3,107. You got the NASDAQ negative by 9, 96.72. The Dow negative by 44, 26,179. We have a little ECB stimulus going on right now, putting a little bit of a bid in the market, putting some action into the Forex market as well. We'll start things off. Let's jump over to the charts. We'll start it off with the Dow and why not? We'll start it off with the headline of that ECB. ECB unveils bigger than expected increase in crisis bond buying. The headline number there uh, and as we come on the air, we get weekly jobless claims. Why not? We'll drop to that number since that's hitting right at 830. 1.877 million weekly jobless claims this week. The expectation was for 1.775. Of course, 24 hours from right now, we get non-farm payrolls Friday morning, 830 a.m. That number the market waiting for as well. So you have the ECB. In March, the ECB unveiled its pandemic emergency purchase program, which will see it by 750 billion euros. And they are now scaling that up. And where is the number? Uh, yeah, they were looking for 500 billion, but they actually came in at 600 billion, I believe. Jumping back to this article, and there it is. So at a virtual meeting on Thursday, President Christine Lagarde and colleagues decided to expand the amount of purchases by 600 billion euros or 675 billion US, extended their duration until at least the end of June 2021. So bigger than the market was looking for, which was a boost of about 500 billion euros, 100 billion extra euros, and that, now we jump back to the charts, and there's your acceleration on that pop. So you have the Dow down at about 26,100. You're currently trading 26,176. You see the pullback, though. We were up as high as 26,254. The S&Ps, 3,105. On that ECB news, we spiked all the way to 3,112. You back it up to yesterday. There's the close of action on Wednesday at just under 3,120. Quite a day in the markets yesterday, right? Dow was up more than almost 500 points. NASDAQ 100, you see the pop on the news, but we've given almost it all back. 96.64, the NASDAQ just within reach of all-time highs, but not quite there yet. Crude oil was above $37 briefly. You have crude pulling back 36.79 currently. Gold contract trading a bit higher after pulling back the last few days. Gold trading 17.14. Euro US dollar. Now there's some acceleration. Euro spiking higher on that news from 112 to above 112.60. We pull back. We're currently trading at 112.29. In terms of other headlines you have happening out there, American Air, they're going to boost flying 74% on demand rebound. So the busiest days next month will have about 4,000 flights up from 2,300 in June. That's America's American Senior Vice President of Network Strategy. The carrier plans to operate about 40% of 2019 capacity next month. That's a big number. I mean, you went from basically normal business to a snail's crawl of air travel and to have it immediately jump back to 40% next month. Encouraging when you think about uh, not many trips planned, especially air travel trips. You know, you might jump in the car and make a road trip as things get back to normal, but have you booked a flight where you're actually gonna be flying next month and they're gonna have 40% of those flights already available? Encouraging news for Americans. Some of the airline stocks yesterday, some of the biggest flyers. And as we speak, the S&P is now down 30, uh, down at 3,100, down 17 points. So American, there's an acceleration on that to 1286. We were at 1185. We were just at 1032. Some of the other airlines, Delta trading higher from 2847 to flirting with about $30. Let's see Southwest above 38. So all of them getting a little bit of a pop on um, some encouraging news. Other headlines I'm going to pull it over in terms of equities making moves this morning. 
So we'll start it off. J.M. Smucker, the food producer, they're out with their quarterly earnings, 257 a share. They beat estimates of 229. Revenue beat as well, driven by increased demand. Smuckers did forecast a 1% to 2% decline in overall sales for the fiscal year. SJM actually trading lower from 115 to 109 market, maybe looking for a little bit more action on their earnings because we closed at 114.59. We're gonna open at under 110 on that chart. You're looking right at about this level right down here on that Smuckers. Tiffany's, so the luxury good makers LVMH is exploring ways to renegotiate Maybe just a renegotiation of its 16.2 billion acquisition of its U.S. rival. The deal was announced in November, has yet to close. Uh, Tiffany, so of course the news breaking a couple days ago that that deal may fall apart. You see the fall off on a couple days. Uh, this is when the news begins to break in October. I believe that's when the deal gets done in November. The price tag working $16.2 billion, I believe comes to about $135 per a share, you see that during the pandemic, it quickly became realized that that 135 might not come to fruition. It makes it back to 130 and hangs at that level from March 25th. And now we're back at about 112 so far on Tiffany, even this morning, trading lower. On anticipation that it's not gonna be, uh, it's not gonna be the same price tag of 135 if it happens. Sienna, the maker of networking equipment, earned 76 cents a share for the second quarter, well above the 49 cents the market was looking for. Sienna, oh, their numbers, C-I-E-N. Right now, we're trading a little bit lower, 55.75. We closed yesterday above 56. FedEx is adding surcharges to some U.S. shipments following a similar move by UPS. The move is designed to manage rising costs and a surge in package shipments amid the coronavirus pandemic. I wonder how that plays out when Amazon's almost like a third competitor in that industry and they are never going to um, squeeze people for money now. Seems like that would be an opportunity for somebody to come in and grab market share potentially at a lower cost. FedEx, no real action overnight for some context from 160 down to 88, back to 138. UPS, from about 120 to 82, we're gonna open flat and Amazon, why not? We're gonna open basically where we closed 2478. We've been hanging around at this area since about April 16th, All right? April 16th, we hit 2461. So you're talking about almost six weeks. Amazon's just been hanging between 2300 and 2500. Carnival Cruise Lines extended the suspension of some voyages of its Princess Cruises brand that traveled to Australia, Canada, and Taiwan. Many cruise ports around the world remain shut due to COVID-19. Zoom Info debuts today on the NASDAQ after uh, the platform's initial public offering 21. When I saw the source list, is that Zoom? No, it's Zoom Info above the expected range, so an IPO. This one's interesting, so Simon, the mall owner, suing apparel retailer Gap over $66 million in unpaid rent. The, the Gap's the largest tenant for the nation's largest mall operator. So Simon, SPG, malls shut down. Talk about some max pain from 140 to 40, 140 to 42, crazy. Uh, 72.88, quite a pop. I mean, this is a daily. Check out the acceleration we had on these malls yesterday. Simon, I mean, this we, we, we started off Monday trading in Simon at $57, and we just hit 77 overnight at 75. And Gap, I believe it's GPS. There it is. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors.
The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of the sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476. 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Market's ticking a little bit negative since I've come on the air at 8.30. We now have the S&Ps below 3,100. We're looking at 15-minute bars. This bar starting right at 8.30, and you see the volatility from about 3,110. Now down 10 points. Pre-market session lows, 3,096, down about 7 tenths percent in the S&Ps. NASDAQ down about 3 tenths percent, and the Dow giving back some of the gains that it had yesterday, down about 6 tenths. Checking in on the Russell. Russell, volatility continuing, down about one. 0.2% on the Russell so far. <clears throat> Some of the other news stories I was reading this morning, an interesting one out from Bloomberg, talking about the U.S. jobless claims. Uh, timely article with you have the weekly jobless claims, of course, this morning. You have non-farm payrolls tomorrow morning. We got ADP yesterday. U.S. jobless claims understate reality with gaps in federal data. So federal figures show zero claims in the new program in 18 states. State data show half a million claims through the same program. Things are moving so quick right now, uh, and there's such a backlog. Florida having a lot of problems um, with unemployment. The numbers, just the, some of the systems not set up, unfortunately, to handle this type of a surge. You have U.S. Labor Department's weekly jobless claims report has yet to reflect at least half a million filings for federal pandemic program with data reporting lagging behind payouts. You have 18 states, Florida, where I reside, where TFNN resides, along with many of our listeners and customers, Alabama, Arizona, Hawaii, West Virginia, among 18 states that showed zero initial claims under pandemic unemployment assistance or PUA in the Labor Department's weekly report last Thursday, but some states have actually received at least half a million in combined claims through the program. Uh, something to keep in mind, that's a big number there, folks. They go over jobless claims undercounted among the 18 states. Florida, 171,000 as of June 2nd. Uh, some of the bigger numbers, you have Georgia with 85,000, Arizona, 77, Alabama, 55, West Virginia, 29. All of those numbers not being reflected in some of those federal numbers uh, as the, they just struggle to keep up. So big numbers there and look for that to continue. And we'll see what happens tomorrow uh, as we get some interesting stuff going on with the non-farm payroll and the market begins to wait for that number. So China, interesting. Yesterday, you had President Trump uh, banning Chinese airlines and the China's aviation because of the fact that, that U.S. airlines weren't being allowed in China. 
even though Chinese airlines were allowed in the U.S. Now you have China's Aviation Authority to allow more foreign flights after the U.S. bans Chinese carriers. So they said Thursday it would allow all foreign airlines to choose from a list of approved cities to operate one international passenger flight a week beginning June 8th. And that was only about 12 hours. So good for that. Showed some progress. Get things done. Get things back to action and some fair travel back and forth. Other stories. What did I have up here? Jumping back to equities. There we go, Costco. So they reported a 5.4% increase in May comp sales compared to the estimate of a 3% decline. The warehouse retailer also saw e-commerce sales more than double compared to a year earlier. Costco, the big box stores, check out that. So 306 to 309, Costco, they did have their numbers coming back, but checking out where they're going to be. It's amazing when you look at the volatility other companies had. This one figured out pretty quickly that life wasn't going to be much worse. It might even be better. We go from that February high of 325, never made it really below 280, but we've never traded back above that 325. Just kind of been in a tight range near the highs for Costco. Fossil. Fossil matched estimates with a quarterly loss of $1.51. Though the luxury goods maker's revenue exceeds the estimates, the company anticipates the pandemic will continue to pressure, I would say, through this year. FOSL is their symbol. You're going to be down a bit, about 10 pennies to 360 or 370. There's your action on their numbers to 409, but pulling back a bit as they miss a bit. And Cloudera reported a quarterly profit of $0.05 cents a share, beating the estimate of break-even. The computing company's revenue topped expectations. Cloudera gave a weaker-than-expected current quarter revenue. Their symbol, CLDR. Talk about a drop off from 1269 to 1106. Some of these operators in the cloud space checking in on Zoom. Zoom, quite the acceleration yesterday following their earnings. We're up at about 221.85. We started the year in Zoom at about $65, not bad. Uh, box at 1882. Jumping around some of the tech. Netflix, uh, FANG stocks, Microsoft. Microsoft reached a high of 185.94 yesterday, looking to open a bit low at the market this morning. Some of these tech stocks, though, you look at it, right? I mean, look at this. We've been hanging up near these all time highs, 185. We might as well be in this range. We we're up in this range towards the beginning of February. You jump over to the likes of Apple. Apple was at 327. Similar action. We're right up in this range now, right up near all time highs as the NASDAQ is. Google shares, not quite the same charge. We got a little bit higher to go, 15.32 of the high. We were flirting above 14.50 for a while. You might call the higher range in Google. Netflix shares have been quite a juggernaut. Made it all the way to 4.58. Netflix trading right now at about 4.21. When I think of Netflix, jumping over to Disney. Disney gonna open a bit lower today. At, we got a bit ask of under 121, but quite a charge higher yesterday for Disney. Putting this on some short time. You see the trade. I mean, we closed out Tuesday trading at about 118 and change. We traded up almost $4 yesterday to 122.45, pairing some of those gains on Disney. Now, some of the Disney parks, uh, excuse me, some of the parks in Florida, being in Florida, some of those parks opening up uh, in terms of Bush Gardens, Universal, so I believe somewhere maybe June 10th, mid middle of June. Uh, Disney taking the route with their parks to wait it out until July. And I said before, I think what you're seeing here is Disney has a lot more at stake than just their parks. So they're going to manage that. They're going to make their, sure they do it slowly because Disney Plus, their movies, their content, their brand, much bigger and much more going on than just park revenue as compared to many of the companies that just live and die off park revenue. So they got to get it back going. Disney, 12090. Some of the ride sharing companies, Lyft, got quite a lift couple days. Uh, Lyft talking about that they saw some big increases up huge yesterday from 3150 up to 3550 uh, backing off a bit to 3439 Uber shares at about 3635 after a pop yesterday. So speaking of a pop yesterday, everything charging higher on optimism about the market yesterday. Boeing shares start the day off in the 150s and end the day in almost the 180s. Boeing we can open higher again today. Look at that, 173 we closed at yesterday. You got a pop right away last night. You're getting a pop probably on the airline news with uh, American talking about expanding to 40% of their routes and Boeing at 181. I mean, we've almost doubled since those lows. 
But at that time, folks, I mean, Boeing, Boeing's going to be around, but it doesn't mean that it's going to be around in its current form. The, the, the possibility of bankrupt, we might be over that hurdle if things continue going the way they are. But it was very real when Boeing was at $89. And they're dealing with their 737 MAX on top of airlines being shut down everywhere. But nonetheless, we're going to open at 181. You're talking about a solid double from that 89 low. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be coming back from the break. See what else we have on tap for Thursday trading. Of course, non-farm payrolls tomorrow, as we talked about. And uh, check out that S&P, making it all the way almost to that 786 number of the full. Drive down to 2174, and we're approaching 1,000 points above that level at 3100. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be coming back right after the break. I'll be back in three minutes. Back in the day, I joined Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. So you have Christine Lagarde holding a press conference for the ECB right now on the heels of their additional stimulus. Checking out the euro, you spiked from 112 up to 112.60 above that level. We pulled back a bit. Gold really accelerating. You trade overnight from about 1700. 
Gold charging higher on that news in the ECB as well, 1723. Crude oil, 3668, checking back on the indices as we've pulled back a bit since I came on the air. The highs at about 8 a.m. We're now giving up 150 Dow points from that level of 26,100. S&P is trading at just under 3,100. The fall, about 15 points off of where we were at. Uh, or 10 points or so in the NASDAQ 100 at 96.59. In terms of that ECB, what they're putting in, so the headline number, buying 1.35 trillion euros, that pandemic bond buying, and to get into it, so they're gonna increase it by 600 billion euros, 672 billion US. The amount comes on top of the 750 billion euros that they're already doing. The emergency program has helped keep borrowing costs lower for the countries in the Eurozone. The latest decision comes after data revealed the severity of the impact of the coronavirus in Europe. The unemployment rate in the Eurozone rose to 7.3% in April from 7.1% in March. I imagine you're gonna see that number rise higher. The ECB had previously warned that the Euro area economy could contract as much as 15% in a worst case scenario. So look out for that. Right now, how about 0.75%, quite a number? Put that on a five day to see where we're at. We've ticked up quite a bit recently. You back it up, I mean, where is that on this chart here? You're looking at a yield that was at about 0.65% on June 1st, and we just ticked up to 0.75 and it's June 4th. Remarkable action in the dollar index. Trading up 97.37, currently on the DXY. Stay tuned, folks. We're going to man Larry Pesavento coming up live with Trade with UC. I'll be back at 10 o'clock with Tom. We got natural gas inventories at 1030 as well this morning. S&P is right at 3,100 as we speak. The Dow, 26,115. And the NASDAQ 100, down about 25 points, but still right near all-time highs. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Larry Pesavento 